Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to finally be making a system to log in a user. So we have to make sure that we have one more module installed, just as in the last video, to make sure that we can encrypt and secure our passwords in a manner that isn't idiotic. Uh, we don't want to store passwords in plain text, so instead of uh, that we're going to actually use a module called bcrypt to make sure that all of our passwords are hashed securely. So again, you can just type pip install bcrypt, and I already have it installed, so it should just say that, but if not, we'll install it. All right, yeah, so already installed. If not, it will install it right there for you, and you'll be set to go. You can check that you have it properly installed by just typing in import bcrypt. And if you don't get any errors, you should be fine. All right, so once you have that done, we're going to go back into whatever IDE you're cho choosing to use. Go into your app folder, and we're going to make a new file right here in the same directory as everything else under app. And we're going to make this file called auth.py. Of course, you can name this anything. I'm choosing auth.py because... Sorry, error. Um, I'm choosing auth.py because it stands for authorize or authentication. And... It'll just be easy to remember, but you could also name this like encrypt or whatever else you may want to do. So, of course, we're going to start off by importing bcrypt. Now, there's a couple functions, about a handful of them that we have to make here. Uh, for the most part, they will be pretty simple. The first ones are just going to be a couple of the git methods. The first one we're going to go over is fairly simple, and it's going to be git hash for user. And this is going to be the hash password for our user. And because we are going to be storing the uh, passwords in a hashed form, we just simply have to return the password for that user. Now, we haven't actually changed our model to have this, uh, or, oh, never mind. We haven't changed the model to have some of the other fields we're about to show and use, but uh, we will worry about that later on. So that's just how to get the hash for the password. Pretty self self-explanatory and very straightforward. The next thing we want to do is actually create this hash. So we're going to create a function called create password hash. And this is going to just take a password parameter. Now in here, we have to do a couple things. If you remember, I can show you when we go back into models, our user has a salt field. Now, the salt is a very important thing in security, and it just makes it so that if two people have the same password, the salt is randomly generated and thrown in with the hashing algorithm so that we end up with two separate hashes, even though the same password exists. So we need to create a salt here just for security, and we're going to do this by using bcrypt and type bcrypt.gen salt, and then 16. And 16 has to do with how many times it iterates over um, generating this salt for us. Next, we want to do a hashed pass equals to bcrypt, and we're going to do hash pw for hash password. Give it the password and the salt that we just created. Then we're going to return both of these. Now this is something nice about Python. If you don't know, you can actually return two values from one function, something that's actually commonly done in a couple of uh, facets of Python, um, including some things with other libraries you may use for processing payments, like with stuff with authorize.net. And we want to do this so that we can save both the hash pass and the salt later on. All right, and then our next function is going to be checking the hash for the user to make sure that the password um, that they supplied will actually hash out to be the same thing so we know that they supplied the same password. Um, so we want to do def check hash for user, password user. And then right here, we're just going to say the stored stored hash is equal to get hash for user. And then we're just going to supply the same user from this function. Next, we want to generate a hash. And this will be recreating, yeah, recreate, if I can spell, hash. And this is a function we're going to make in just a second. 
as is this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a function called recreate hash that takes the password and the salt for the user. And we're going to make sure that this pops out to be the same uh, hash as what is stored for the user. So once we have the stored and generated, uh, we simply return stored hash is equal to generated hash. If they're not, then it'll return false. If they are, it'll return true. So after we have done that, let's start off by creating the, let's actually do this up here. We want to create a method for getting the salt for user. Again, that's going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to return user.salt. Now, uh, down, he down here again, we're going to want to start off with the recreate hash function. Pretty simple to do as well. Recreate hash password salt. Then here what we're going to do is we're going to say the hash pass, the hashed password, is equal to bcrypt's hash pw function of string password. And I'll tell you why I'm using string here. There's probably a better way, but just for simplicity I'm using this. When you pull out uh, the password and salt, they sometimes won't actually be in a standard string form, but we want them to be here when we actually use them. So when we pull them from the model uh, for the user, we may actually get something that isn't the same standard string object as is required by the hash uh, pw function. So just to ensure the integrity of our data here, we want to make sure that we wrap those around string. And we'll talk about this problem later on if we run into things, and we can come back here and always uh, polish up this code. So then we're just going to return this hash pass and we are almost done. We have one more function called validate. This is going to take user password and it, we're just going to say if check hash for user password user return true else return false or actually I we don't even have to do that we can just say return check uh, hash for user there we go and then we'll say password user so what this will do is it'll return whatever we get back from this and as we talked about up here in the check hash for user it'll return true or false depending on how these two uh, come out of our functions Okay, then back over here in our user model, we have to add some functions for the login manager uh, that we installed in the last video, and we never really used it, but over in our init here, we imported login manager and we created our own login manager object. So now we're going to use this, and this is going to be specific to our user model, and it's going to help us do a lot of background information um, of what session people are in, if the session is still valid, uh, the ID, and all, all kinds of other fun stuff for the user. And it requires that we use a couple uh, specific methods for it, and that we use a couple what are called decorators. So we're going to start off here with a static method. And this just means that we don't actually have to instantiate the object in order to use this. And this is a specific decorator that kind of wraps over the function and makes sure that the the method returned goes through this process to become a static method. Uh, underneath this, we're also going to want to say login manager dot user loader. Now, what this will do is this is a very specific decorator from the login manager object that will identify the following uh, method as a way of actually loading the user into the session for us. So here we're going to make our own method called load user. It's going to take in the ID for our, for our user and return user.query.get and then user ID. So this is us using the model for user to interact with our database. So we're saying we want to access the user table, we want to query that table, and we want to just get um, the row with this user ID. So it'll check through all the users we have, look at the ID column we specified up here, and it will get us 
only the users that have this ID. And because this is a primary key and unique, that means that we'll only get one user turned back to us, which will be uh, the same that is identified with this ID. It'll be unique and that specific user, and we don't have to worry about any conflicts. After that, uh, we just have a couple methods that are kind of simple. Is authenticated. We're just going to say return true here. Um, the user should be authenticated by true uh, or <laughs> by default, so we shouldn't have anything um, needing to be done in that method because it's all done when we actually uh, get to the step of using the login manager, we will have already authenticated them by checking the hashes through bcrypt. So now that we have is auth is authenticated, we need is active, which all of our users will be active. We don't have anything that specifically gets rid of them yet. We may add banning feature later, and then you can go through there and check to see if the user is banned and return true or false based on that. Um, is anonymous. We will not have any anonymous users, so we're just going to say false there. And then the next step, we are going to make another function. This should be our, our last kind of login manager specific one. And this is going to be get ID. And this will just simply return the Unicode for the ID of the user. So whatever user we're uh, using right here, it'll return the ID, but through Unicode so that we can use it through anything that uses Unicode, which is universal, i.e. uni. Now we're just going to do one more thing, and this is more for looks than any practical purpose at the moment, but we want to uh, write over the default object representation method. And we're, we want to do this so that when we actually print out a user, we get some more information back to us that's kind of useful. So we're going to say that if we need to represent this object, we want to uh, actually use the uh, username of our user. So if we ever try to print out this object, it'll say user and then print the username, which will give us more information than just the ID because we'll see what name uh, they use that is displayed against everyone else for the object, which is also as unique as the user ID. All right, that's all the time we have for this video. In the next one, we will actually go over making our login view function and our login form along with the template for our login so we can actually finally log in a user. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. It helps out. If you'd like to share the video, that would be even better. It helps us get more people to view these videos and gets more people active in our tiny little community here. If you would like to see future videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.